What's going on guys? After I ranked all the reverse retro jerseys yesterday, it had me thinking I haven't made a tier list video in a while. So, and after making the trading for lining video the other week, I decided why not rank all these second overall picks from the past 20 years, which is why I'm actually wearing this 1507 shirt. As you can see, the first player there is the all-star himself, Danny Heatley. I actually had to like dig deep in the dresser to find this, but I figured I had to wear it. Now before we get to the All-Star, a little bonus here. I want to include the 1999 draft where Daniel Sedin went second overall. Obviously one pick before his twin brother Henrik went third. So I think Daniel Sedin pretty obviously is a Hall of Fame talent. Um, those two at the top of their game were dominant players. Winning out Ross trophies, leading that Canucks franchise. I think definitely both of them will go down in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Now moving on to the All-Star. Um, will he be in the Hall of Fame? Or I guess not so much in the Hall of Fame as much as a Hall of Fame talent. I remember the last time we did this, we actually renamed this to like, I think franchise player, which I think makes a little bit more sense. So Danny Healy, I mean, he put up 15 or 7 back to back years, definitely looks like a franchise player then, but the rest of his career, I think top line contributor is probably a bit more accurate for him. Um, obviously, we can't just base it off his two best years. It has to be like overall the sum of his work. I think top line contributor makes a lot of sense. That's pretty fair. Now, Jason Spezza, a guy he actually played a lot with, put up those two 50 goal seasons with. Uh, with Spezza, would you call him a franchise player? I feel like he's close as well, but I'd probably have him on top line contributor. Obviously, right now he's playing fourth line for the Leafs, but it's, you know, looking at their career as a whole, I mean, this guy got drafted in 2001. That's almost 20 years ago. Uh, Kerry Lettinen, this is a tough one. So, a goalie early is obviously always tough. It's why it doesn't really happen much anymore. Um, he's definitely going to be either good but not worth the pick, because I think a goalie that high, they have to be, you know, Carey Price-esque uh, to make them, you know, worth the pick. Flat out bust though, I don't think Carolina was that bad of a goalie, he was pretty good, started a lot for Atlanta, then of course Dallas, I would say he's a good goalie, but I was not worth the pick there at second overall. Eric Stahl, um, this is another guy for me, kind of in between franchise player, top line contributor, obviously a big part of that Carolina Hurricane Stanley Cup back in 2006, still a good player as well, like, you know, he's only a bit older there than Heatley, who's been out of the league for a while, Spets is fourth line, Stahl is still playing in that top six. Um, is Eric Stahl a franchise player though? I feel like he's super close, but I think I'm gonna have him a top line contributor. I feel like franchise player, you know, really has to be kind of that next echelon of player, which Kenny Malkin um, definitely is. I think he gets overshadowed a little bit by Sidney Crosby, but um, in his prime, if it wasn't for Crosby, I think, you know, Malkin would be even more of a household name, was just that good. Um, in Pittsburgh, and for some reason, he just kind of found a next level to his game whenever Crosby got injured. He knew he had to step up his play for his team, and he always seemed to do just that. Uh, now, Bobby Ryan here. This is a tough one, too. Bobby Ryan, I mean, people are probably going to think flat out bust because of his bad contract. That's not the case. Um, he was top line contributor, you know, for a few seasons early on in his career. Like, he had a 70 point year, looked pretty good in Anaheim. In Ottawa, he still was good for a few seasons. I mean, I don't think I would consider Bobby Ryan a flat out bust. I would say he's good, but not worth that pick at second overall. Now, moving on to Jordan Stahl here. That's actually really cool. I didn't realize both Eric and Jordan got taken second overall. Um, Jordan's definitely not a top line contributor, I think, on a really good team. He's like the perfect third line center, which was the case on Pittsburgh when they won the cup. So I think he's good, uh, but wasn't worth that second overall pick. I believe that same draft, Hayes got taken third overall. Um, he should have got taken first overall. I think Eric Johnson was the first overall pick. So yeah, uh, Taze is the pick there. And even, I'm sure there's other players you could have taken above Jordan Stahl at number two. Uh, JVR, this is another one. Uh, it's like he's in between for me. He's kind of like in between good and not worth the pick and top line contributor. Although I think he's had more good seasons than top line contributor seasons. So I think JVR probably uh, goes on that line as well. <laughs> Drew Doughty, the guy we hated on the most for the EA rating. Definitely not a 91 overall defenseman. But he did win a Norris Trophy, you can't take that from him. He has also won a couple Stanley Cups. Um, Drew Doughty, would you call him a franchise player over the course of his career? Uh, I don't know, he definitely had some really good seasons, but even his best seasons, I think you could probably argue are more closer to top line defenseman than a franchise defenseman. So I'm gonna put him top line contributor for like the sum of his career, and I think that's you know still pretty fair. Now Victor Hedman, Victor Hedman seems to just keep getting better. Um, I don't, I mean you could, if for me, it's between franchise top line. I think you can argue he's a franchise defense. He's the best defenseman in the NHL right now. Uh, I think having him franchise player there is probably pretty fair. Now, Tyler Sagan, this is another tough one. Um, Sagan. Sagan's really, really good at the top of his game. Sagan looks like a franchise player. He definitely turned around Dallas, I think, that trade they made with Boston. Uh, Jamie Ben alone wasn't enough for that team. And I feel like bringing Sagan in definitely gave them the dynamic duo they needed. Now, having said that, Franchise player, top line contributor. Uh, that's another one so close. I think top line is 
probably more fair for Sagan, but um, you know he's had flash as a franchise player. Um, Gabe Landeskog, I think, is the definition of a top six winger. He's not a franchise player. He's worth the second overall pick, though. He's a top six winger. He's solid. That one's, I think, probably the most easy one to do. Uh, now, Ryan Murray. This one's tough. So, I was actually looking at his stats. He got drafted back in the 2012 draft, which is one of the worst drafts, obviously. Second overall behind now, Yakupov, who was a bust. I think you can argue Ryan Murray's a bust, too. Um, that's, like, what? Eight years ago. I think he only has, like... 500 games played or no it was less than that i forget the total number of games played he had but i remember it works out to about 40 games a season which basically means you're only getting him for half the year on average also too he was just traded for a fifth round pick where now yakubov at least was traded for a third round pick and we said yakubov was a bust i know it has to do with injury problems but even still you just look at how much he's played what he's done for a second overall pick i think you can definitely argue murray is a bust uh, i don't know about flat out bust um, we can we can take away the flat out, but we'll say bust. Um, you'd expect more, I think, from a second overall pick. Uh, now, Alexander Barkov, I remember at the time, was a bit of a reach. Everyone was like, thinking he'd be either Duran or Jones at number two, but uh, Barkov was definitely worth it. I would say right now, top line contributor, but uh, looking like he could you know go down as a franchise player. Um, Sam Reinhardt at number two, I think definitely was a good player, but not worth that pick, uh, especially two when Dry Saddle goes three. Uh, that's going to be tough for them. And I think probably even after looking at the rest of that 2014 draft, uh, there's some other really good players. I feel like David Pasternak would have been in that 2014 draft. So uh, Reinhardt's good, but I don't think he was worth that number two pick in 2014. Jack Eichel, he's a franchise player. I mean, literally, I think it wasn't for Connor McDavid. Uh, all right, he's obviously the same year, but Jack Eichel's a first overall pick talent. Just happened to be in the same draft as Connor McDavid, who's on a whole nother level. So yeah, Jack Eichel definitely franchise. I'm not sure why he's like faded there, but... Uh, we'll put Eichel Franchise. Now, Patrick Liney, like I said, kind of the reason I thought of this one. Uh, we're looking at all the trades for him. Austin Matthews went number one. I feel like Matthews is somewhere between Franchise and Top Line. Line A, I feel, is probably Top Line. Could, you know, become the next OV if that happens. I'll say he's Franchise. But right now, he's just a really good top six winger. Kind of similar to Landis Cog, although more of a scoring machine. Uh, now, Nolan Patrick, it's another tough one. Uh, I would say it's not too soon to judge. Like, he got drafted three years ago. Completely missed last year. Uh, the two years before that, he had 30 points each season. I know he's had a lot of injuries issues, but similar to Ryan Murray, um, I think you expect more than a number two overall pick. And I feel like he's losing time here to show that he was worth that pick. And, you know, right now, I think at best case scenario, you say he's good, but not with the pick. And even then, I'm not sure if I would say he's good. I would say he's, like, a decent player, but not with the pick. In which case, for number two overall, I feel like you got to give him a bust, especially when Heiskanen, Makar, Peterson... Uh, so many other players are really, really good taken just after him. Uh, now, Andrei Svechnikov here. Uh, after his first year, I would have said he was good enough to pick. After his second year, he's looking like a top-line contributor. I think Svechnikov's a very good player. Obviously, pulled off the Michigan. Um, don't think it's you know too soon to judge. So I think Svechnikov looks to be the real deal. Now, I do want to add a couple other players on here. Um, the first, obviously, would be Cabo Caco drafted last year. Um, the too soon to judge category, I think that's like kind of a cop out. It's not as fun, so we're actually gonna delete that row. Um, so Capo Caco, basically, we're just gonna guess where he's gonna end up after like his whole career, similar to Heatley Spezza. And I think Capo is gonna go down as Gibb, not the pick. Uh, I know we're basing it off of one year, but again, let's try to make it fun. I'm trying to guess. I definitely don't think he'll be a franchise player. You can see only three of the last 20 guys I considered franchise um, and top line contributor. I think it's actually gonna be tough for him in New York. I think he's got Panarin and Lafreniere. I think he's going to find his role more as a second line winger. And then, of course, Quentin Byfield, um, just taken by the LA Kings. Um, is Byfield going to go down as a franchise? Like, Lafreniere, I think, will be franchised. And they're saying Byfield's really good, but obviously not quite uh, the level um, Lafreniere is. But they said, you know, player comparable is Kopitar, who's going to learn from. I would say Kopitar is a franchise player. Um, so for me, I'm thinking Byfield goes down somewhere between top line and franchise. And you know what? I'm going to be optimistic for Kings fans. We're going to say Byfield becomes a franchise player for you again. He hasn't played an NHL game. So uh, we're just going to kind of guess there what, what happens with him. Uh, so next year, I actually want to view the community ranks. It's always fun. That's what everyone else says. I only had three guys there in fr uh, Hall of Fame, or franchise, Hall of Fame talent. Kind of the same thing. Um, Flato Bus Svechnikov. Okay, so his list is immediately invalid. I don't know how Svechnikov's a Flato Bust. Take a look at this dude. Um, so he's got Doughty and Sagan, as well as Barkov actually up there in the Hall of Fame talent. Again, I think I was a little bit harsh maybe on this one, but um, also pretty fair. 
Eric Stahl is going to make the Hall of Fame, which is why I changed it to franchise player. Um, he will be in the Hall of Fame, though. Letton is a flat-out bust. See, goalies, that's... I don't know if... I don't know if that's fair. I think he was a good, good goalie, but obviously just not worth uh, number two overall. <laughs> Goat Tony. I think this has to be troll. A regular bottom six. Maybe this kid's not old enough to know that uh, the All-Star put up 50 goals in 07. He's well, he did in 06, in case you didn't know. Um, Doughty Hemmings Sagan as Hall of Fame. Not Jack Eichel. Not Malkin. Um, okay, so I'm thinking this is another guy who's probably 12 and doesn't realize how good Malkin was. The Eichel one's also really interesting. Look at a couple more here. No flat out bus. Okay, he's kind of a coward, I'd say. <laughs> Not going anyone flat out bus. Malkin only Hall of Fame. That's an interesting Bobby Ryan flat out bust. Again, I don't know if I agree because he had some pretty solid years um, with the Ducks. This is actually really similar to us. Uh, just the two defensemen there. Again, I think Doughty, you can maybe argue. And then we'll the last one here. So Malkin, this is pretty close. Lonnie too soon to judge? I don't think so. Like, he's had four or five years in the NHL. I think it's pretty obvious he's a top line guy. But uh, that's me, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, as always, if you did, please leave that thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. I'll have a video planned hopefully every single day this week. You don't want to miss out. Besides that, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.